Hello everyone. Getting cranked up this morning, getting started. Sun's about to peak over the horizon. Absolutely stunning. So we're continuing on in the book of Genesis this morning. Uh, we were chapter 11, I do believe, last time, talking about the Tower of Babel and how God scattered his people. And at the end of chapter 11, we get a mention of this man named Abram that we're going to be talking about for the next few days, I'm sure. So we get this little glimpse of Abram <clears throat> The end of chapter 11 tells a little bit of his background and where he was and really start off here in chapter 12. So we see here this communication that God has with Abram. Chapter 12. Where God tells Abram, look, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to, as he says, I will make thee a great nation and will make thy, <clears throat> thy great and thy shall be a blessing. And he says, I'm going to bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. I have a land for you, a promise. Well, Abram's response is, builds an altar and he worships the Lord and then his next response was immediate obedience God said get up out of this land I have a new land for you he made a promise you know we're going to notice a theme here God makes a promise Abram or Abraham whoever he is at that time builds an altar and he worships God God's promises should always bring in us worship that's that should be our response and I think about how many promises God makes in his word and I just kind of skip over them and read over them and keep going and go well that's good that's a good good promise not really taking in what he's saying what it means not reacting appropriately like Abram did worship 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 let's remember you know I've talked about this before obedience is worship the smallest things can be sometimes it's just hey one of these. I read God's promise and it, it puts a smile on my face because I realize how good he is and I want to praise him for it. That's worship. But Abram builds this altar and he worships God. He takes God at his word. He remembers that promise. You know, that's important. The other thing that I want to talk about is it's important to remember God's promises. You know, God's promises are, you know, for lack of a better term, a binding contract because God can't break his promises. You know, you've heard people say, well, there's nothing God can't do. Yes, there is. God can't lie and God can't break his promises. That is in his nature. That is the essence of who he is. He doesn't lie and he doesn't break his promises. So if he says something will come to pass, it will come to pass. So, and we'll see that as we read about Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. They'll bring those promises back up in times of trouble. They'll say, God, you promised this, but I'm not seeing it yet. And you promised. And that's okay. You know, it is a, it is a, for lack of a better term, a binding contract. 
God, when he made a promise, he signed the contract and said, it's done. So Abram gets up and he leaves this land. He goes to the land that God has promised him. And we read about what happens. Here's another common theme here. God's promise, act of worship, obedience, trouble. God's promise, act of obedience, worship, trouble. So Abram's in the land, and we read that there's a great famine come upon the land. So he takes all of his people, all of his possessions, and he goes down to Egypt, where there's always, <laughs> always trouble, always trouble in Egypt. Egypt always represents what the world has to offer. There's trouble. So they go down to Egypt, and obviously Sarai, who was her name at this time, was quite beautiful. So he tells her, look, tell them that you're my sister, and... Because if they find out you're my wife, they're going to kill me and take you for themselves. Abram is worried about Abram. He's trying to protect himself. But God, God is worried about Sarah. Because he sends these plagues because just like he said, you know, the, the Pharaoh saw Sarah and said, you know what, I'll, I want to take her for myself. I want her to put her in my Harold. But God is always looking out for all of his children, not just some of them. He sends a plague and obviously reveals to Pharaoh that the reason you're in this plague is because of Sarah. God is looking out for the people that we don't look out for a lot of times. We can always look out for self pretty good at that but God's looking out for everyone so the king of Egypt says I don't um, and Pharaoh says I don't know why you brought this trouble on me get all your stuff and get out now I have to assume there's still a famine going on there's still a drought so you know we turn to the world and that didn't fix it so what happens they go back into their land Obviously, if there's still a drought, there's not a lot of grazing pasture for all of their animals. So there's a dispute among Lot's servants and Abram's servants. A dispute. A conflict. A conflict in Israel. Imagine that. <laughs> it's not funny, but it's true. Well, that's hard to imagine, isn't it? Conflict in Israel. So... What does Abram do? He tells Lot, look out over the land and you pick which way you want to go. If you go left, I'll go right. If you go right, I'll go left. What was that saying about Abram? His relationship with Lot was the most important thing to him, not the land. Not the land. Remember, I've made the point when we started this that it's always about relationships. It's about relationships. First and foremost with God, and then secondly with other people. Abram says, you know what? I'm not gonna we're not gonna have grief between me and you over a piece of land. Well, wouldn't this world be a lot better place if we all took that stance? How many conflicts have we seen over piece of land between families over a piece of land so this lot do he looks out and he sees the plains of Sodom and Gomorrah and he sees that it's beautiful and says I'm going that way and Abram says that's fine you go that way I'll go over here to the place that doesn't look as good you know, just because it passes the eye test doesn't mean it's always the best for us. The first thing that should matter is, is God.
God going to be with me? Because wherever he is, that's the best place. Not the one that looks the best. The one that has his presence. So, they split. What happens? You know, Abram goes up. They're separated. And God meets with Abram and says, Look out over all the land because it's all going to be yours. That's my promise to you. To you and your seed. All of them. It's going to be yours. He says, for I will give it to you. Another promise. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to be with you. Your people are going to be numerous. And I'm going to give you this land. It's all going to be yours. How does Abram respond? He built an altar. He worshipped. Again, he worshipped. That was his response. That's uh, kind of my moment that I want to take away from our two chapters this morning. What's your response to God's promises? Are you like me a lot of times and you just kind of read over them and go, man, that's good. That's, that's good. And it is good. But do I worship him for it? Do I give him the appropriate praise or do I just go, mm, yeah, that's good? Worship should always be my response. And sometimes it's nothing more than a smile and going out and realizing what, what was another one that Abram did? How did he worship God? He was obedient and he put others above himself he didn't always do it let's remember as we read these we'll see that quite a bit and I'll make that point how faulty these people we're reading about were but how faulty would it be if you read about my life story even let's, see, let's not even go that far back let's read about my life story since the moment I was saved a lot of things I messed up. And if you were reading about me, you'd go, boy, Kevin really messed that up. And you'd be right, I did. Well, I can tell you, this Abram really messed some stuff up. But he got a lot of stuff right. And as we'll read about later, you know, God is always looking at the heart. Not the actions all the time. The heart. Because the heart is all that God cares about. Let's read his promise. Let's take him at his promise. And let's give him adequate worship. God bless you. I hope you have a great day.